carnivores are fleeing. When you successfully get on the carnivore way of eating, it's like waking up. You discover that everything you've been conditioned to think about food, nutrition and exercise is either wrong or skewed. Conveniently wrong or skewed so that throughout your life you'll gravitate towards medications, diet programs and coaches to help manage your health. Keeping you dependent on a system where you have to constantly spend money. And as more people transition to carnivore, there is one thing in particular that they all flee. Even once they've transitioned to carnivore, some people do remain stuck, however, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. But before we get into it, I want to talk about another kind of fleeing. It's the kind of fleeing where people will watch a video and then forget to click like and subscribe. Watch and flee, if you like. Now, I know that's not you. It's all the other people watching. And this is a reminder for them, because I know you've already done it. For everyone else, if you could do me a massive favor and smash like and subscribe before you flee, I'd really appreciate it. With that said, let's get into it. So once transitioned to the carnivore diet, most people find that they easily flee and are free from a concept that has haunted them their whole lives. But even once on carnivore, it still haunts some people. It's a construct so pervasive that some people just can't shake it. And it's the construct of calories. And the theory of calories in, calories out. Now I'm not going to go into a long and technical explanation about why calories and calories in, calories out are BS. Instead, I'm going to give a short explanation for calories, and then I'm going to show some equivalent examples so that you can see how ridiculous this is. So, how do we assess the number of calories in a particular food? A piece of the food we want to measure gets put into a machine called a bomb calorimeter. And inside the machine, the piece of food is surrounded by water. The piece of food is then burned completely, and that burning process heats up the water. If the water temperature increases 10 degrees, then there's 10 calories in that food. If the water temperature increases 100 degrees, there are 100 calories in that food. If the water temperature increases 1000 degrees, you've got yourself a box of Pop-Tarts. Now, I want you to ask yourself some questions. Do you think what I've just described is the way your body treats the food that you consume? As you eat food, it just burns up or explodes? The only thing I've ever eaten that explodes are beans. And it's not that kind of explosion. And the other important question is, do you think your body treats every single piece of food exactly the same? Let's say you're a proponent of a whole food plant-based diet. Do you really think that 10 calories of kale is the same as 10 calories of candy? Do you really think your body's going to treat them the same way? Of course not. The only similarity is that you should spit them both out immediately. Final questions. When was the bomb calorimeter invented? When was the human body invented? Which one of these two things do you think has a more accurate handle on discerning the quality and nutritional value of a particular food? Let's now consider some equally bad measures of food. We could count our spaghetti and phallic vegetables by laying them down one after the other in line and measuring them in feet and inches. You might laugh, but how is this any different to measuring them in calories? Neither of them take any nutritional content into account. And as your body doesn't know what a calorie is, it doesn't know what feet and inches are either. We could count fish by the number of laps they can do in the pool before they get tired. Still as useful as calories. We could measure tofu by the number of seconds it takes you to throw it in the trash. Again, still as useful as calories. At the end of the day, calories gives us one thing. The ability to compare one food to another in a completely useless way. Because it assumes your body is going to treat spinach, steak and pizza in exactly the same way. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. If the water temperature increases a thousand degrees, you've got yourself a box of Pop-Tarts. We could count our spaghetti and phallic vegetables by laying them down one after the other and measuring them in feet and inches. We could count our spaghetti. <laughs> 
We could measure fish by the number of laps they can do in a pool before they get tired. <laughs> we could count fish by the number of laps. <laughs> we could measure tofu by the number of seconds it takes you to throw it in the trash. <laughs>